Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to import geospatial data of a very specific data format, which is S3 shapefiles into Google Earth without having to go through any intermediate conversions. Yes guys, it's totally possible to do that. Now for our viewers who do not really know about S3 shapefile format, S3 shapefile is a geospatial vector data format that is very commonly used in geographic information systems and typically this is how it would look if you're looking at a particular shape file and as you can see it's just a bunch of different files as a whole and that's what makes up the shape file. So these are the two shape files that I'll be using in today's tutorial for demonstration purposes. The first shape file is basically referring to a set of selected capital cities in the US corresponding to a selected number of states. And we are going to import this into Google Earth and plot them out on the map. And the second shapefile that you see over here is basically referring to different states of US. And we'll also have a look at the data that's uh, embedded inside this, these two shapefiles separately so that we can see what sort of information we're going to import and plot out uh, in Google Earth. So before we go into that step, I'm just going to take a couple of minutes from you guys to actually show you what sort of data that have been embedded inside these two different shapefiles so that later when you import this into Google Earth, it'll be easy for you guys to understand uh, what kind of data that we're actually working with. So I'm going to use an exclusive GIS software package just for a couple of minutes uh, just to explore these uh, shapefiles with you guys and I'm, I'm using QGIS software package for that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the two shapefiles and I'm going to drag them and drop it over here. And for the time being, I'm going to deactivate this US states shapefile. And even though it might not be that uh, clear, maybe I might change the symbology just a little bit so that those points would be visible for you guys. And if I go ahead and open the attributes table of this capital city shapefile, we can see that the attributes table uh, basically consists of two different things. We have the state over here and we have the corresponding capital city over here just for a selected number of states. So each of these uh, different point actually refers to a location of a city. And now if I open up the second shape file, which is this uh, the states of US, and if I check the attributes table, you can see that we have two columns. We have one column for the state that basically refers to each of these different states. And over here, we have some other information that's uh, related to the population density. So these are actually the number of people that are living in that state per square kilometer. And before we jump into Google Earth, there's one more thing that I would like to clarify or would like to bring to your attention. If I check the properties and if I check the coordinate reference system that I'm actually using for this particular layer, you can see that it's EPSG 4326 WGS 1984 geographic coordinate reference system. And for the next layer, it should be the same. So if you happen to work with different types of projections, just make sure that you actually convert those different uh, coordinate reference systems into EPSG 4326, which is the WGS 1984 geographic coordinate reference system, so that when you import that information into Google Earth, there won't be any distortions or misrepresentations. So that's quite an important fact to keep in mind. Alright guys, so without further ado, let's jump into Google Earth and we'll see how we can import this data into Google Earth itself without the help of a dedicated software package like QGIS. So once you have opened up Google Earth, I'm going to click on My Places once over here so that all of my imported files will get placed under My Places. And I'm going to go to File and click on Import. And over here you can see that I have already navigated into my folder, but I do not see any files because from here I need to select the type of file that I'm going to actually import. So in my specific case, I'm going to import uh, S3 shape files. You can see that there are so many other different file formats that can be imported into Google Earth in case if you did not know. And S3 shape files are one of those. So I'm going to select S3 shape file over here. And out of the two files, I'm going to first work with this capital cities shape file and later we'll see what we can do with this US states uh, shapefile as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this capital city shapefile and click open. 
And now it's asking whether I would like to apply a style template to the features. And I think it would be helpful to apply a style template uh, specifically for cases where you might be importing datasets that uh, might have similar characteristics in such kind of a case. You don't really have to do all the styling that uh, that we are going to do all over again. You can simply refer to one of these templates and you can just uh, import them in a matter of few seconds. So I'm going to create uh, my own style template. and. As you can see over here, I'm going to create a new template and over here I'm going to set the name field to be the name of the capital. And down here you can see some sort of a preview of the same data set that we saw just a few minutes ago. But uh, it's not it's not a complete list because it's just a selected uh, preview of the table. So we only see about yeah 10 entries. So after I select capital, I'm going to move on to the next tab which is the color. We have actually multiple options. We can set the color based on the field. We can use a single or we can opt to use random colors. Now for this shapefile, I'm going to actually use single color. Maybe we'll go with the yellow. And, and what that does is it's going to apply the same color for all of the points that we're going to import. And over here, you can see that we have the option to select uh, an icon from quite a number of different uh, types of icons. You can see we have the pin and we have this balloon icon. And if you scroll down, you will see some other different types of icons as well. Well, for the time being, I'm just going to go with this uh, yellow color balloon. And under this height tab, I'm not going to change anything. So I think that's pretty much it. After that, we can go ahead and click OK. And now it's prompting us to save uh, this style. Just keep in mind that what we're trying to save over here is just the style template. So that in case if you happen to import uh, a data set which has similar characteristic to what we are dealing with right now, we can directly go ahead and use this style template. So I'm going to name this as capitalcities.kst and save. And now you can see that it's automatically navigating into the area where those dots would get placed, but we cannot see the, the points yet because we have to go over here and activate this capitalcities.shp file. And as soon as you do that, you can see that all those capital cities of the selected states are actually appearing just as how we would intend uh, them to appear. Now, if you want to make some changes uh, to the color or, may or maybe to the appearance of uh, each of these different icons or even to the text, there are two ways of doing that. First, if you click on these capital cities and go to properties, what you can do is you can go to style color and you can share a style. So as soon as you do that, you can see that the icon changes and what's going to happen is that whatever you do in terms of assigning different icons, colors or changing the size properties of the items, everything will get assigned uniformly to all the points that are existing over here. For example, let's say if I want to go with this pin instead of having the balloon, you can see that it automatically changed and got applied to all the points. And if I increase the scale, you can see that the scale of all the points are actually getting increased. And if I click OK, and right over here, you can make changes to the label as well. Right now, you can see the name of the city is getting displayed in white color. Now, you have the option to change that as well. For example, if you go to this label and select the color over here, and if you go with a different color, maybe let's say yellow, you can see that that is getting applied to all of the text that you can see over here. And you can even increase the font size. Well, I'll try to keep the font size to a level that won't make the whole map look too messy. Yeah, I think that should be fine. All right. So that's how you actually make uniform changes to all the features that you would import into Google Earth at one go. But let's say if you wanted to make some specific changes to a selected number of points, what you can do is you can expand this and you can select the corresponding point or the, or the single feature that you would like to make changes to. For example, let's say if I want to make, make some changes to the icon of Denver. Now, if you click on this and if you go to properties, you can see that now this, uh, the icon which corresponds to Denver is sort of blinking gives us the indication that we are sort of trying to make some changes to that. Let's say just for Denver, I would like to use a different uh, pin color and maybe increase the size just a little bit. Now you can see that that particular change actually got applied only to Denver and none of the other points got affected because of the change that I did. 
And the same goes to any changes that I would do to the text as well. If I go to style color and if I go to label and let's say I would change the label color to be light blue like this. And you can see that that got applied only to Denver and not to the others. So that's how you make uh, individual changes. You can even opt to display or hide the points as you wish by simply clicking over here on top of this uh, checkbox. And in that way you can you have the full control of deciding what to show and what not to show in your map. All right, I guess that's about it for this capital city shape file. So I'm going to hide this one for the time being. And now I'm going to talk about the next shape file that we discussed just now. And that was the, the states of US. So I'm going to go to file, click import. And now we are going to select this US states S3 shape file. And over here, you can see that it's asking whether we want to apply a separate style for that as well. And I think I do want to apply a separate style for that because our features are actually different from what we, what we had before in terms of the geometry as well as the information itself as well. So I'm going to go with a different style. And over here, we need to set the name field and I'm going to assign this to be the name of the state. And when it comes to assigning colors, now I think we are quite familiar with using single colors and random colors. What this does is basically it's, uh, it's going to assign random colors to all of these different features that we can see over here. So basically for all the states, it will be randomly assigning colors. But if you would like to set the colors based on a specific field value, for example, you can see that we have quite a helpful field for which we can use this option, this set color from field which is this population density because let's say if you go with this uh, color set color from the field we can sort of highlight the states that have very high population density in maybe a color like red and we can create a gradient that's changing from red to let's say blue and the darker blue colors being states that have very low population density so that immediately we can get a good glance at the states that are having very high population density the states with the uh, medium population density and the states with very low population density. So that's what I'm going to do. And for that, I'm going to select the color field to be population density in this case. And right over here, you can see the, the number of splits that have been assigned by default are just three. We can actually uh, increase this one. It depends. It depends on your personal preference. Let's say if I if I were to go with maybe about 10 buckets, all the population density starting from zero up to 436.4 will be will get colored according to whatever the color that we are going to assign for this particular box. And this is basically referring to the maximum population density according to this table over here. So that should get a color. And it would be nice to have sort of a gradient that varies between these two colors that automatically gets assigned for the boxes in between. And we can do that quite simply. For example, you can take the starting color to be something like, let's say, red. Or in fact, in this case, the starting color should be maybe the cool color or the blue color, which uh, refers to low population densities. And the end color, I'm going to assign that to be red. So now you can see that the boxes are actually varying from blue to red automatically. So this is going to indicate the states with high population density with these warmer colors. And it's going to indicate the states with low population densities with these cool colors. And the intermediate values shall be mapped to, to these uh, greenish colors as we can see over here. And of course you can change this, uh, the number of splits from here. And that basically is something that depends uh, depends on personal preference. And for this, let's say I'm going to go with population densities up to 7. And for the next one, 16. And maybe for this one, 24, 29, say around 43, 97, about 165, maybe about 287. And over here, about 500. And the final one, I'm going to keep it to be the maximum as we cannot really change anything over here. And after that, I'm going to click OK. So as you can see over here, the file got loaded, but uh, nothing would get displayed yet because we haven't activated this layer yet. So I'm going to click over here once. And now after a while, the information should appear accordingly on the map. And you guys can see that now the data has been displayed according to the categorization that we did, where it shows states with the very low population density in blue and states with very high population density in, in warmer colors like red and orange. 
And actually the highest population density over here should be District of Columbia. You can see that according to its size, it's actually quite small. So if you click over here, even though it's not really a state, it's a district, you can see that it's getting colored in, in red color, which indicates uh, the highest population density, 4355 people per square kilometer. And if you go to other places like, and even places like uh, New Jersey, you can see that the population density is relatively high, about 487. And if you go to areas with more cool colors, you can see maybe right over here, you, you can see that the state of Montana only two people per square kilometer. And if even if you had a look at Alaska over here, I think the results should be quite similar. It should be basically one or less than one uh, people per square kilometer. All right, guys, so these are some of the ways that you can use Google Earth directly to interpret data from S3 shapefiles without actually having to go through uh, intermediate steps like converting them into uh, different file formats like KMZ and then again importing that back to Google Earth. You have the capability of directly importing S3 shapefiles into Google Earth and do basic styling. It's not going to be very advanced like uh, dedicated GIS software packages because the objective of Google Earth itself as, a, as an application is actually not really to do a spatial analysis. So the capabilities are going to be quite limited, but for basic use cases, it should be comforting to know that you can actually import uh, S3 shapefiles directly onto Google Earth and do these kinds of uh, visualizations. So if you guys think that this tutorial was helpful and if you learned something new, show your support by hitting that like button and we would really appreciate if you do subscribe to our channel if you think that this kind of content will be valuable to you guys so that uh, you'll be notified as soon as we publish a new video on this channel. So as always, thanks a lot for watching guys. Uh, if you do have any questions, add a comment down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible and I'll see you again with another tutorial very soon.